Three hours ago, Logan Paul dropped a YouTube video explaining how he bought not one, not two, but six first edition base set Pokemon booster boxes. I'm going to explain my thoughts and opinions and what I think it means for the hobby and for investing. So again, these are just my thoughts. I'm not an expert. This is just me uh, expressing my love of the hobby as well. So first and foremost, right off the gate, he says, I'm going to buy every single first edition base set booster box in the world. He kicks off the video with the bang and you can just tell this guy, he knows what he's doing, the video editing, the production, the, uh, the high hopes and goals that he has, the dreams and then the execution um, and the ability to execute. He has the capital to do this. He's, he spent over $2 million buying these booster boxes. And um, it's, it's quite astounding. It's, it's very surprising. And uh, it's captivating. You could tell why he makes uh, videos that do so well. But the really, the true first thought I had about three minutes into video is if he truly does this or even gets close, that obviously, obviously means one thing. And that is that the supply of first edition base set booster boxes will drop. It will not drop to zero. There's going to be someone out there who's smart enough to do what I would suggest doing, which is you hold that sucker and you don't sell for any price. You hold that sucker for 10 years, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. That thing is going to, you know, pay for your life, your family's life, your grandchildren's life. I mean, you'll be set forever. Um, and that's just my opinion. I mean, it's not just going to infinitely skyrocket to a hundred billion dollars. That's not going to happen. But I could see it hitting a million dollars one day, maybe even two million, maybe 10 million in 50 years. Who knows? However, it's going to require a huge a lot of patience and either enormous willpower to just keep saying no or uh, an environment where you've just cut off the internet from ever knowing you have the the box um, and you can already tell that Logan's not going to be able to purchase every box in the video itself he he's he goes to this uh, hobby store and he's talking to the owner or this the guy who sold it um, it's hard to tell who he is but I'm assuming both the owner and seller and the guy gives this quick story on how he got these two boxes which was some guy went on a vacation to Hawaii, bought 20 of those boxes, and left them in, in, in the, his closet and forgot about them for about 21 years. Then he's been slowly selling them out. And the, the way he, he says it, it, it makes me think that this guy still has maybe 18 boxes or at least a few more boxes that he's you know, choosing to hold rather than sell out on. Um, if he had, if someone has that many, I think that's a good approach. You know, we're currently seeing a big spike now and, um, it may drop in a few years, but then in five, 10, 15 years, it might jump up again. It's definitely climbing, especially when the supplies just disappearing. Um, and that, that really brings me to one of the things that I love about sealed collecting and personally, I have a few sealed products, not much. I have, I'm on a very shoestring budget. I have a Base Set Unlimited booster pack, a Jungle, and a Fossil. And then I just bought some Modern Unlimited. So I have Shining Legends, a box of uh, Japanese tag team, and then uh, on its way is a uh, Vivid Voltage uh, Elite Trainer box. But that's what I can afford in on my small, uh, you know, shoestring uh, hustlers budget uh, as you call it but I am a true believer in sealed product and if I had the capital no there's no doubt in my mind that I would buy first edition booster boxes and just hold them um, because all I see for the most part are people ordering them and then opening them on a live stream and I'm not just talking Logan Paul I'm talking tons of other youtubers um, Z and G, he buys the box itself and then he breaks it. He breaks the box and then he sells the sealed pack. So some of those people will keep the sealed pack. Some of them will open them. You don't know. But um, then you have Pokey Rev. He's buying like 
first edition booster box, what seems like every week, every few days, and then opening them on his channel. Uh, I, I still don't really understand how that's a sustainable business model five years down the line when the supply goes to zero, but we, we don't really know what the supply is. We don't really know how many is, are still out there, but it seems like there are less and less. So um, it just, it, it's not something where um, I believe you need to have an advanced degree in economics to really be able to sense what's coming. And I'm just using my basic economics to see that, you know, first edition base, those, the, the numbers of them remaining out there are going to dwindle until there's less than 10, less than how many fingers I have up in this world. And, it, and um, that just means one thing, you know, if the supply gets so low, the demand is going to get so high. And to me, the amount of people opening sealed uh, vintage product is just a bit r rather ridiculous. Um, they're just opening left and right, even smaller channels. I'm seeing a lot of smaller YouTube channels, pokey YouTube channels on uh, YouTube and on TikTok, and they're doing the same thing. And so it may, just makes me wonder, like, is it a short-sighted approach? Do they just want to have that and open it because it's so old? Um, and are they really considering the long-term effects of that? Because each time that happens, and if Logan Paul really goes through with this and opens up all six, that supply of sealed first edition product is just going to tank. Um, now, keep in mind, while six seems like a big number, six is just six. It's not 14. It's not 119. Um and I don't know if Logan had much more money to buy more. There's probably, he may have run out of money. He, he spent two million. Who knows how much more he had. So there's that as well. But um, you have to keep in mind that while it is decreasing over time, that is a sure fact. There are people, there are investors and collectors, some new coming into the market. You have Deep Pocket Monster, uh, of you know, Pat Flynn, a big uh uh, online business channel. He, he he set a goal to collect every vintage first edition booster box. And so this is a new guy who has the capital, who came into this market uh, as a lover of Pokemon a year and a half ago, who has, has now gotten very far on his goal. And he's probably going to keep those boxes for his collection for at least five, ten years, maybe forever. So you have new collectors as well as old collectors who have maybe been in this hobby for 5, 10, 15, 20 years who have just because they're so rich or because they want to keep anonymous and mysterious or you know private they just buy all this stuff and then just lock it away so there's some there's always going to be at least one out there and so whoever whoever holds on to that um, and chances are it's not going to be primarily motivated because they're trying to hold it and make the most money just because they love it themselves so much. Because of that, I think there will be a booster box one day uh, that may be the last of its kind out there worth a million dollars plus. Um, so I think the hold strategy is very valuable. But where does that leave the rest of us? Us shoestring budget people. Of course, I know I would definitely... I would have bought a first edition based booster box a long time ago because I had the same thoughts going through my mind for about, I don't know, half a year, a year ago. Um, I just don't have the money. So what, where does that leave the rest of us? You know, you might think, well, what about first edition Jungle? What about Fossil, Team Rocket, Gym Heroes, the other vintage sets? And, uh, you know, Unfortunately, it's not as cut and dry as that. First off, all those boxes are way out of my price range as well. They're still in the five figures. Uh, so there's that. You know, it's just completely not a chance I would ever get be able to get that unless, you know, something miraculous happened. On top of that, it pulls in all sorts of other factors. As um, Twice Baked Jake, another pokey YouTuber, has mentioned, um, Fossil and Jungle, even though they're the next sets right after base, you know, first off, you have completely different supply and print amounts that we don't know of, but it seems like the supply is much higher. And then on top of that, 
uh, Twice Baked Jake said, and I totally agree with this, that it's just not going to be the same. First edition base has a lot of the iconic cards. And it, while I still have a lot of love for many of the cards in Jungle, in the Neos, in, in Rockets, um, do other people... Do other people see that? Um, I don't know. Currently, Logan Paul has just been focusing on the base. And I think, personally, when I got into the hobby about uh, January 2020, after you know loving Pokemon and the video games for so long, I quickly moved on from base because not only was I starting to get priced out, but also I had a long love of Pokemon and it spanned more than one generation, two generations. It spanned three, four, five generations. And now I'm even getting into some of the modern cards. Not as much as uh, some people who seem to know like eight, nine generations. But I know a lot of them and I know them very well. And so I just naturally started to gravitate to, to more of the later sets. And so I'm hoping Logan does that. I think there's so much more to the hobby that he's yet to tap into. But currently, he's he's, he's kind of just focused on the base generation. And that's the thing, you know. Some people, they only care about that first generation, that 150 Pokemon. And unfortunately, you know, that means that Jungle Fossil and any sets after that may not have the same appeal or value going on there. Um, and here's the thing. Um, if you don't know about these cards... Um, fossil and jungle sets they technically include some of the first generation it, they include the remainder that were not featuring in, in the original generation so that's why I like it but for some reason you know others don't like it as much like I, I feel like it's because people don't like the remainder they just want the you know most of the iconic stuff and so that's just me um, and uh, yeah, so final thoughts, does that mean, you know, we should, we should invest in the, uh, on base set, the, the unlimited versions, the non-first editions, and that's a whole nother world that I don't have the answer to, and I, I can't advise against, you know, what I can tell you is that unlimited prints of these cards are much, much higher, and, they're different because they don't have that first edition stamp. So people aren't going to value them the same as a first edition. The first edition prints are like much, much less than the unlimited. And there's still tons and tons of people. I'll probably There's probably uh, every person knows someone in their family, friends, network that has unlimited Pokemon base or jungle or fossil cards in their garage or basement or somewhere else or in their attic. So... Um, who knows? Um, I will say I am pretty excited about this. I wish I could be more of a part of it. But, you know, at my budget, as I am, I'm just going to be an enjoyer of it. I'm just going to be watching, viewing the live stream, the opening. And there's something about this that I think just excites me more that I'll be watching it. You know, when I got into this hobby, I know PokéRev was unboxing almost the same thing or, you know, sets like this every week, sometimes every few days. And I would, although I was subscribed, like 95% of them I would just not watch. Um, maybe 99%. I, I rarely watch his box breaks um, just because I guess I never had the time or... Uh, deep interest to wa spend another three hours watching that but for some reason maybe it's because of the scarcity or the excitement that he puts into this or the monumental capital he's put into this I want to see him him break this box and also another factor you have to keep in mind you know it's not just about the money it's about the enjoyment the hobby the fun of the brand so keep that in mind you know I'm a huge fan of this thing as well I even have a Pokemon Go TikTok account that uh, used to do pretty well. It got up to 20,000 followers and now it's kind of plateaued in growth. So I'm a huge Pokemon Go fan as well and pretty darn good at the game. Um, and then, you know, even if you, you know, try and invest in, in, if you have the capital and you're like, I am a tech entrepreneur, I'm a millionaire, 
this might be a good time to go into the market. Before you do that, and think about this. While that's true, Logan hasn't broke the boxes just yet. He's saying he will. He's saying he'll break the first of his six late February. But, you know, he might change his mind. He might start thinking financially or from an investor standpoint. He might be like, you know what? I have six. I'm going to keep two. I was going to break all six of them. I'll keep two. Maybe make that three. Make that four. And then all of a sudden, the supply doesn't drop as much as you think. Um, but nonetheless, um, very interesting thing. All I'm saying is I wish I could collect, own a first edition booster pack. Not even a box, a pack. But I ain't got six figures or five figures. Thanks for watching. See you guys later.